Hey folks, if you'd like to support me or this channel, Moose University, in creating more video tutorials, then please consider making a financial contribution at my website, MoofUniversity.com. Thanks and enjoy the video. Okay, so in this video I want to discuss membrane lipids and introduce them. And so, so what is a, a membrane lipid? A membrane lipid, we know that they're lipids that make up membranes. That should be pretty intuitive, right? Membrane lipids, what else could they be, right? <laughs> so. Uh, what what are they though? What do they contain? They're basically they contain a polar head group, a polar head group. So that's one portion, and then they have a hydrophobic tail or a nonpolar tail. Okay, so that's kind of what I've drawn here. So this is like a, a little representation of what a membrane lipid should contain. It should contain a polar head group and a nonpolar tail, so that it can make up a membrane. Now, all of these membrane lipids that we'll talk about are amphipathic or amphiphilic which of course amphiphilic which means they contain both uh, polar or, or hydrophilic and nonpolar or hydrophobic portions okay now so membrane lipids, they can actually be divided in a, in a variety of ways, but I've just divided it up like this. So membrane lipids, I divided them up here as, you, you could have phospholipids or you could have glycolipids. So phospholipids contain a phosphate group, whereas glycolipids contain a carbohydrate portion, glyco, of course, refers to something like glycogen, right? Sugar. Right? So it contains a glyc oops, not portion, portion. <laughs> contains a carbohydrate portion. So now once you have a phospholipid, you can classify there's two types, right? You can have a glycerophospholipid or you can have a sphingolipid or a sphingophospholipid or a phosphosphingolipid. Um, so let's look at those. Now what is a glycerophospholipid? Well, it's got the backbone. The backbone is glycerol, and that should make sense given the name, right? Glycerophospholipid. Phospholipid because it has a phosphate group, and that's shown down here in the red portion. And the glycerol refers to the glycerol backbone. The rest of it is not too complex. The glycerol backbone is what we have here. We have a phosphate group as part of the polar head group. The rest of the polar head group has some alcohol attached to that phosphate group. The other two groups attached to the other two carbons of glycerol are just fatty acid groups. Okay? So that's a general sort of structure or or sort of what a glycerophospholipid might look like. So it's a phospholipid because it contains this phosphate, glycerol because it has this glycerol backbone. And of course it's a membrane lipid because it has this polar portion with the phosphate and alcohol and the nonpolar portion with the fatty acid tails. Now a phospholi a phospholipid that's a sphingolipid, the difference really is is pretty much that that instead of having uh, a glycerol backbone, it has a sphingosphene backbone. And the sphingosphene backbone kind of loops around, right? It, it goes up and it goes around like this, so we don't have room for two fatty acid tails. We'll just have one here, okay? Um, even though though the, the, the sphingosphene kind of, like the, the, the backbone itself kind of has pretty much a fatty acid tail. At, at least it's got a hydrocarbon tail that, that sort of takes up this space where the fatty acid would have been in the glycero uh, with the glycerol backbone, and of course the the um, the polar head group is a phosphate group attached to some alcohol. So both of these are phospholipids because they have phosphates in their polar head groups, and the only difference really is the the backbone, and the backbone uh, is the root difference for uh, whether or not we have two or one fatty acid actually attached to the backbone. So that's phospholipids. Now, over here, glycolipids, they contain a carbohydrate portion, so that's going to be their polar head group. So there can be glycosphingolipids or sphingoglycolipids. And, I mean, I'm, either way, the, the, the name makes sense. I'm not really sure exactly how you'd break it down. But the point is that the, the, the sphingolipids would have a sphingosine backbone. They'd have that one fatty acid. But their polar head group would be some carbohydrate portion, right? Now, Galactolipids, galactolipids are a little bit different than sphingolip, uh, sphingolipid gl that are that are classified under glycolipids. These have a glycerol backbone, two fatty acid tails, and then a carbohydrate portion. Okay. Now, um, galactolipids um, could actually have, 
I, you notice I've drawn a little dotted line coming out of this carbohydrate portion here, and that's because you can attach a, uh, a sulfate group there. And if a sulfate group is attached to the carbohydrate portion on a galactolipid, what you have is a sulfolipid. Okay. So this was just a sort of overview of the membrane lipids. I hope that video was helpful in introducing them. Thank you for watching. Yo, if you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe for more content. And if you know anybody who might find the videos helpful, then please share it with them. Thanks. Happy studying.